Hello, everybody. This is Gregory Leifel with the San Filippo Foundation. Uh, today, we have a couple of guests from the Pleasant Home Foundation in Oak Park, Illinois. Uh, Pleasant Home has been a partner of the San Filippo uh, Foundation. Uh, we've done some charity tours for them. And uh, in Pleasant Home sits a 100-year-old Mills Fialano automatic music instrument that Jasper San Filippo donated to a Pleasant Home. And we're going to find out why it's there and what Pleasant Home does. So um, I'd like to start out with uh, welcoming uh, Rayanne Spencer and Teresa Zarnick. Uh, and just ask, uh, can you tell us what is Pleasant Home Foundation and uh, where exactly are you located? Okay. Well, I can start out with that one, Rayanne. Okay, Teresa. All right. So, well, the Pleasant Home Foundation, the history of it goes back to 1989. So in 1989, Pleasant Home was and still is owned by the Park District. And in 1989, Pleasant Home was the home of the uh, Historical Society of Oak Park River Forest, as well as a senior citizen center. And the Park District had the idea of putting together a task force to figure out how to use the home and what to do with it. And this task force brought in people from the community with all different expertise. And they recommended that the house be a house museum. And that was the beginning of the foundation. So the foundation, when it was formed, it was tasked to maintain, operate, and restore Pleasant Home. So the foundation uh, started training docents to give tours. They um, put together a restoration plan. They started planning fundraising events and they were instrumental in Pleasant Home becoming a National Historic Landmark in 1996. Wonderful. And we are at 217 South Home Avenue in Oak Park. Wonderful. And everyone is welcome. Um, right now, you know, we're, we're still dealing with some of the uh, COVID restrictions, but um, we're hoping that uh, we're going to be coming out of that very soon. Uh, and we, we have, a, we have we, once the things open up, we have um, every Thursday is free. So you can drop in any time between 11 and three. Our docents are there. We offer self-guided tours. So um, everyone is welcome. Uh, and we would encourage everyone to come and visit us because we want to welcome everyone home. Yeah, in addition to the, the self-guided tours, are there other tours and events you offer? Yes, indeed there are. Yeah. Um, we, um, I'll talk about a couple of them and then I'll turn this back over to Teresa, but um, we have uh, three, three docent led tours. Um, and the first one is our newly expanded house tour. And this talks about the the, 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 the uh, two families that live there. And it also goes into the architecture of the home. Uh, the home was designed by George Mayer. He was a contemporary of Frank Lloyd Wright. He worked with him briefly, but the home is designed in the prairie style. So the family and expanded architectural tour you get, um, now we've opened up all three floors to um, our tours and we have the original furnishings. And so, and we also are now going to the third floor, which Teresa is going to speak about in a minute, but that involves the servants quarters. And then we are just now launching our latest tour, which is called the Lost Gardens of Pleasant Home. And this is strictly an outdoor tour. So we are, we are going to be opening this very soon under the CDC guidelines and the park district, but it's all outdoors. And it explores the outbuildings that were there, structures that weren't built and it views the architecture from the outside. So those are the two tours that we have. And then Teresa can talk to you about the servant tour that we have. Yes. So another new tour is the servants tour. 
And now that we have the third floor open, that means we can take people up to the ballroom and the maids quarters. And so putting together the servants tour was a, was a lot of fun. We don't know a lot about who the servants were at Pleasant Home because they didn't keep records, but we're able to go to the census records from that time, as well as newspaper articles because John Farson kept scrapbooks. So we were able to go to the scrapbooks and find out about some of the servants that actually worked at, at Pleasant Home. And one of the exciting things we were able to find out is about the gas range, right, Rayanne? This happens <laughs> to be one of my favorite parts of the whole tour. <laughs> so we have a very old photo of the original gas range at Pleasant Home. And you can't really make out anything except the maker, which was the Detroit Stove Works Company. So I contacted the Detroit Historical Society and they went to their archives, the curator went to their archives and was able to find out exactly the kind of range that it was. And he said, it's an early gas range. And on the, um, what he said, on the low end of the commercial range. So because Pleasant Home was, they did a lot of entertaining, the Farsons did a lot of entertaining. So they needed this huge gas range with two ovens. So that was kind of neat to, to learn that they had one of the earliest gas ranges around. I, re I remember it being a beautiful looking stove. Yes. Just, it's just so cool. We wish we still had it, but we don't. Yes. But we have, and we have one of the original owner's manuals that goes with it too. So um, this kind of gives everybody a, a range of different tours that they can come to. Now you might want to know, how do you book a tour? So um, you can go to um, pleasanthome.org and then you can book there by um, sending in, uh, by either by calling our number, which is area code 708-383-2654. Call that number to book a tour or an email at rspencer at pleasanthome.org. And then we will schedule those tours for you. Um, the tours are $10 uh, regularly and then $8 for senior citizens and members. But because we're starting a new year, we want to invite as many people into the home as we possibly can. If you buy one tour ticket, we will give you the second tour voucher for free. So we have a buy one, get one free. That's wonderful. Uh, Teresa, can you tell me a little bit more about the Mills family that lived there? Ah, so Herbert and Leonie Mills bought the home from um, Mrs. Farson, Mamie Farson in 1910 after John Farson died suddenly of a heart attack. And Mrs. Farson said, I can't live in this place anymore. So she sold it to Herbert and Leonie Mills and their eight children. And Herbert Mills, we know, came from a family of inventors. And Herbert, and Herbert Mills owned the uh, uh, Mills Novelty Company. And they made all different kinds of coin operated machines, but they made their money making slot machines. So that was, that was their, that's how Herbert Mills made, made his fortune. He also dabbled a little bit in the movie industry. He owned uh, the first moving picture theater in, in the city. Um, and there were actually a couple of silent movies made at Pleasant Home. And I wish we had access to those, but we don't. But then Herbert decided, uh, I've had enough, no, I'm going to concentrate on the Mills Novelty Company and making my products for them. And that's where we come in with our, um, the Violano Virtuoso that Gregory referred to earlier that, that the uh, Jasper donated to the Pleasant Home. And it is an incredible machine. It's a combination of a piano and a violin. And uh, 
when we play it for our guests, which we always do several times, and um, you, you can open the doors, you can see the mechanics of the machine. And so everybody huddles around it up really close. And we turned it on and it's very loud and people have the tendency to jump back but they're just fascinated by this machine. And um, on, a, on a kind of a personal note, my sister-in-law had her 65th birthday party there and we played the virtu Violano Virtuoso for their first dance. So um, it, it, just, it just fits into the home and everything. And it's just, people are intrigued by this. And we really hope that you'll, again, you'll come by and, and listen to this. We have a number of those machines at San Filippo and uh, Jasper, be because of uh, the mill's history, uh, decided to donate one to the, the foundation over there. Um, and we're glad you're showing people it and playing it. <clears throat> uh, my next question is, uh, how is Pleasant Home uh, funded? How, is, uh, how do you get your funding to keep this treasure you have in Oak Park available to the public? Um, we have two basic ways. Um, we um, uh, have an extensive list of grants that we apply for. And the second way is by our loyal donors and contributors being very generous to support our um, the Pleasant Home Foundation. Um, so we don't really get any funding other than through the grants and through the donations. And also on our website, there's a spot where you can donate if you would like to. Um, everything that you do for us is so greatly appreciated and it helps us keep our doors open. Well, it is a treasure in Oak Park. It, does it encompass almost an entire block, the property? Yes, it's 4.43 acres. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah, and it actually took John Farson, I think about 16 years to accumulate. He started out with a couple of parcels of land and then he gradually bought up land and houses around him. And I, I know uh, some of our music folks from the um, automatic instruments, uh, particularly the ones that play outdoors, they do have a little rally over at your place every once in a while, and I believe they have one coming up. We are indeed going to have our rally, and um, everyone looks forward to this because we have the instruments inside, the smaller ones, and then there's some very large ones that are outside. So you get all this music going, and it's just a lot of fun and excitement. And um, this event will be free. And so uh, again, you can look at our website and find out when that is. We're beginning to um, get that planned. So everybody's looking forward to it. Unfortunately, we couldn't have it last year, but we're gonna come back bigger and stronger this year. And plenty of space to uh, social distance outside your We place. certainly do. We have yeah. four over four acres to social right. distance. <laughs> yeah. Um, how, how did, what do you feel your organization does for your community, uh, besides being this wonderful attraction that brings people to Oak Park? I think that one of the things that we're able to do is to give people a slice of life of the past and let them know what the history is. Um, Mr. Farson, um, the original owner, played a huge part in the community. Um, and it just also serves as a um, educational venue um, where, um, to let people know the, the, about the past. And um, also we open it up for various lectures, and musical events. So it's just showing someone of the, of the people of the community, as Jeffrey says, the treasure that we have. But Teresa might want to add a little bit more to that. Well, yes, I, I think our community is very aware of Frank Lloyd Wright and Frank Lloyd Wright's legacy. And a lot of people don't know George Mayer and don't know that he was a major part of the prairie style architectural movement and that our ho pleasant home is a very early example of, of that. And so it's, nice to share that with the community and they go oh I didn't know that I'd never heard of George 
mayor before. So just to educate um, even you know, community members about who George Mayer was, because there are very few of his homes that are open to the public. Actually, I think Pleasant Home is the only home that's open to the public. Is it? Uh-huh. All the so more reason, can, <laughs> all the and, more reason and, to go. <laughs> yes. And, and, you know, um, part of the, the beauty, well, the, there's a lot of beauty to the home, but we have some incredible stained glass too that is part of the home and it has just been recently restored. So um, that's just something too, that's very um, inviting to people to come and learn about that. And so we have a lot of different things that we can show people and tell them. A lot of people say, oh, I've walked by here 15 times. Well, right. on that 16th time, we want you to come in. Right. And then I also wanted to add that, you know, we have a relationship with obviously the park district because they own Pleasant Home as well as the Historical Society of Oak Park and River Forest because they, they were housed in Pleasant Home for many years and we wanna keep that relationship. And the park district offers a lot of events for the community. So we wanna keep that, you know, the relationship between those organizations, that's important to us too. And we're just beginning to, uh, we're going to have our first big event in May, and it's called A Night Out in History, that we're partnering with the Cheney Mansion that is owned by Oak Park, Pleasant Home, and the Oak Park River Forest Historical Museum. So um, we have a lot of partnerships, and this is a new event that we're having. So we're really excited about that. So again, stay tuned to our website, and you can learn about that event, too. I understand both of you are volunteers. Yes, yes, we are. Which is I'm, a, I'm president of the foundation board and Teresa is one of our lovely, wonderful, knowledgeable docents. Thank you. So what does volunteering mean to you personally there? What, what do you get out of it? Um, what does it do for you? Well, for me, I've been living in Oak Park for many, many years, and it's always been important for me to give back to the community, the community that I love. And I've been going to Pleasant Home for years, going to the concerts, going to plays, and I've just always loved it. And I love history and love architecture. And I thought, oh, what an opportunity to give tours to the visitors that come to Oak Park and to share my love of history and architecture and to show them this beautiful home, which many people do not know is here in Oak Park. And it's been a joy to do that, to share. And especially with children. Children love Pleasant Home because there are so many um, patterns, motifs. There are lion's heads all over the place that they, that they explore and look for. So it's, it's a, just a delight to share that. And it, for me, it, it just kind of takes me out of myself and puts mm. you in, into a, a, another era, but you get to meet the most, one of the, the great things I love is, is to meet all the different people that come through. So when we're giving tours and then all of a sudden someone pops up from Australia and they go, oh, do you know this? Someone's from Paris or unbelievably, some people come from my hometown in central Illinois. So that people come from, from literally all over the world to see this. And then what is exciting is then you can see their enthusiasm spark and then yours continuously sparks. And then we go, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. And before you know it, an hour tour goes into a two hour tour. <laughs> and so we have to kind of sometimes curb our enthusiasm because we are so excited when people do come to visit us. So. Um, that's, it's, it's just a wonderful experience to meet so many different people. And, and it's like Teresa said, the, the children love it too. And they love the Violata Virtuoso. They're fascinated by that. Yeah, they like to dance around. Uh -huh. They love to dance. But in the drawing room, yeah. yeah. Well, wonderful. I'm gonna ask you if you could uh, just give your website again. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna try and pull up a picture to share with the audience. Uh, so oh, great. 
Just keep talking about how they can contact you and I'll see. Okay, if I can so um, the best way to find out about us is at pleasanthome.org. And there, and then that will get lead you to the phone number or the website where you can book a tour. And then we will get in touch with you, see what tour you would like to take and what day that you would like to take it. We have a, a number of different, do I think we have like 10 or 12 docents. So all are trained and ready to go. And again, that's uh, pleasanthome.org. And that will give you all of the information that you need about our hours and how to book a tour. And don't forget our free Thursday tours. Yes. Which we will be more than happy to show you around there. And um, another thing, while well, Jeffrey, while well, Greg's looking for the photo, we also have a new relationship with the Blue Island Historical Society. And they, um, the gentleman in Blue Island also owns a George Mayer designed home. And so we're partnering with them and going to be doing a documentary about Mayer and his homes in Chicago. So that is another thing that we would, um, be sharing with everyone too. Well, the uh, Zoom thing is not allowing me to share the picture, but what I will do when we release the recording is I will get the pictures on there. Great. Uh, because uh, the woodwork alone in that home. Um, yes. Is so phenomenal. <laughs> it's the, the gentleman that designed the woodwork lives three houses away from Pleasant Home. He also did all of the woodwork in the walnut room of the former Marshall Fields. So he has a, a, a direct tie there. And so um, his house is just right down the street. Well, Rayanne Spencer and Teresa Zarnick, uh, thank you so much for talking with us today. Um, I can relate to both of your jobs because I do both of them as well over at San Filippo. <laughs> Uh, we are grateful to have a partnership with such an interesting organization. Uh, we do wish you the best. Uh, we encourage folks to uh, visit your website uh, and particularly come out and support uh, your organization in Oak Park. Uh, you don't have to live in Oak Park to support it. There are oh. wonderful pieces of history all over the country and uh, San Filippo, just uh, the foundation here, just enjoys when people recognize that and put their dollars behind it to keep it going and then share it with as many people as possible. Yes. And we, we thank you for taking the time to meet with us. We always love yes. to tell the story of Pleasant Home, don't we, Teresa? We sure do. Anyone who wants to listen will tell it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thank and, you. Uh, good luck. Thank, Thank you, you Greg, very much.